it's been a week since the terrible earthquakes hit uh, southeastern Turkey and northern Syria. And yet we are seeing these harrowing images still coming true, having all these reports that there are these badly affected communities that are still not getting the aid that they need. Um, you know, what's the reason for this? A huge, huge, a vast majority of the populations, the communities who have been affected by the earthquakes, both in Syria and in Turkey, are actually Kurdish communities. So we knew from the beginning that because of this fact, unfortunately, we could anticipate that any response from the Turkish government, given who they are and what they what their ideology and what their their I guess, occupational mindset has been for as long as they've existed. We knew that any response that they have to these tragedies will be politically cynical at best. So what we've seen is, is and you're completely right, and, you know, it's it's been, yeah, like you said, nearly a week now. Um, we're still getting reports, and these aren't just hearsay. These aren't just rumours. Where We've got video testimony from victims on the ground from survivors, people's families who have, to date, not seen any sign, any official sign of the Turkish government. So no search and rescue teams, no aid coming to them. We've had some people in some of the most you know, horrifically affected areas right at the epicentre of these earthquakes, so including um, in Hatay, who, you know, were pleading, pleading for some assistance where there was none. People could, you know, it's 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 extremely harrowing um, and you don't ever become any more desensitised to these things, but we've, we've, we've got video testimony and these are our community's relatives and family members talking about how, you know, they can still hear their siblings, they can still hear their kids. And, you know, obviously this has been the, in, especially the first few days, um, they could hear their voices from the rubble. They could see movement in their heads, but there's 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 no way for to help them. And so they've, they've been there in agonizing pain, um, waiting for some official, you know, some some sign of uh, official rescue or official support from the state, which has sadly been completely non-existent um, in a lot of these areas. So it's it's important to realise that this has been the case. Um, and it's instead of instead of taking some of the criticism that's that's been allowed to come out that's sort sort of surfaced despite bans on there's also been bans on uh, Twitter. Erdogan has also banned the use of, they, they've blocked the internet in a lot of different places. So really, really trying to take a stronghold on any communication going in and out um, and cutting really vital, vital networks, vital platforms for people to, to at least, um, because that's what they've been left to, coordinate between themselves and among them, amongst themselves, coordinate and organise rescue so people would put geolocations of family members for instance and people would use these these platforms to get mm. the word out there to uh, mm. undertake all sorts of extremely critical um both awareness raising but also really uh pragmatic you know solutions to to some of these problems on the ground um because of the lack of official state support um it's been left to the residents so they've banned twitter they've they've um blocked access to uh i think youtube for a while as well they've blocked access to in the internet um whole scale in a lot of areas um and some of the criticism that has sort of made it through instead of taking heed and actually realizing that this is this is you know this is going to cost them dearly um they've further clamped down on those communications they've further clamped down on their lack of uh resources their lack of support and what we've seen actually is um you know it's it's probably shocking to hear but even within the first few days of the tragedies um there was there were little bombings across the border um in Kurdish areas in areas where people have been already displaced by the Turkish government so well that's they haven't stopped their prioritization of the war on Kurds both yeah you know in 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 the in in the Turkish territories but also in Rojava and in in uh, in northern Iraq they're continuing their war. And I understand that um, on the other hand, uh, the, the, the Kurdish freedom fighters in, 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 uh, in northern Iraq or in South Kurdistan have actually called a unilateral ceasefire. 
uh, because of the of the earthquake. Yeah, the Erdogan regime seems to be trying to dismiss all these um, overwhelming criticisms of its failure to respond adequately as uh, some sort of disinformation campaign. And and I understand they're actually threatening to to take down the details of the people spreading this disinformation campaign. So the first few days, instead of taking heed of some of these criticisms and, and these calls um, for, for change and desperate pleas, what Erdogan did was take to national TV and actually really aggressively threaten, you know, those who he basically calls the enemy of the state, those who criticise um, their, their response, and rightly so. That um, We also saw, I think, in the last few days, or at least that, I've, that I know of, two Kurdish journalists, one from uh, a journalist from Jean News and a journalist from, uh, I think, Medi um, Mesopotamia Agency, were actually uh, taken into custody and arrested for taking footage of, um, of some of those scenes in the Kurdish areas. Um, so it's it's yeah like you said the war on the Kurds has not stopped um we you know unfortunately we're seeing time and time again that no amount of human Kurdish human suffering um is enough to to you know satisfy the bloodlust of, of this regime and in fact you know and especially because it's so close to the upcoming election Erdogan and the you know AKP um led government have done absolutely everything in their power to actually use this uh to you know further further entrench the kurdish people and the populations um they've made in the last i think day or so they've made some attempts to kind of remedy their image because they see that there's a huge huge wave of criticism and not just from the kurdish populations mm. but from from all Turkey and it's coming out yes. in the West now. So yeah. what they've started doing to appease that is to, you know, and it's all it's all a show, it's all a superficial kind of performance to put uh to start putting out arrest warrants for the developers who've made these really, really shoddy buildings that are not up to code. Um, but it's really, really important to remember that, you know, these earthquakes happened in specific places that are very very well known to be geolocated in places that are extremely prone to earthquakes of this magnitude so they've known this is an inevitable occurrence for a very very long time um Erdogan's even been you know taxing people has even been um, instead of learning from the past, learning from the horrific, horrific tragedies of the past in terms of all the earthquakes that have happened, which we actually saw a similar lack of responses and even humiliating, um, you know, tactics used by the government instead of learning from that and saying, actually, we need to prepare. Um, what they've done is 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 exactly the opposite. So uh, where they did put building codes in place, they haven't been enforced. And so instead of Erdogan taking some responsibility for actually his government enforcing those building codes, what he's doing is uh, at least televising or at least advertising that they're putting people in jail and they're putting people, uh, they're holding developers accountable, even though it's the incredibly, you know, it's a whole corrupt system and nobody, you know, it's been said no one can, no one can nail a screw into a building without permission first from the, from the government. And we know that there's, there's a huge interplay of um, AKP corrupt politics and and development they go hand in hand so I, I i hear they are even stopping aid from getting across border crossings people who want to help from outside are not being allowed to bring the aid in is this is this happening um is this happening in in many places or is it a particular crossing it's it's happening in various places it's also happening in syria so we've got video testimony from aid workers from charity workers saying that they've got truckloads of really really vital aid that people have donated that people have collected and coordinated stopped at the border by akp officials basically telling them you know giving all sorts of bogus excuses and we know we know that they're completely false excuses so stopping them holding them basically to ransom there at the border when people are dying by the minute and are in critical need of, of, of those resources. This is also happening under Assad's regime where we've seen um, truckloads of aid being actually stopped. He's also demanding at the moment that aid 
all aid um, resources be passed through him and his government and we know that they're not getting to some of those most crucially affected areas um, where, where you know, a lot of those populations are Kurdish, a lot of those communities have also Arab and, and Christian, they've already been displaced at least, you know, one or two times and a lot of that is tied directly to the Turkish occupation. So, you know, one of the things that is particularly kind of like kind of demonstrative of, of um the the criminal negligence of Erdogan is that you know it's not for a lack of resources so like I said there's this and, and you mentioned that there's all this aid ready to go to people mm. when he's stopping them at the border the other fact to mention is you know Turkey has NATO's second largest army they are incredibly resource rich where they want to be so you know at a moment's notice and well within 24 hours notice he can have a whole you know swathe mm. of army officials um to attack anywhere he wants across the border to attack the Kurds but for some reason they cannot coordinate to get rescue teams where they're needed for their own citizens within their own um within their own countries and in fact now I think one of the new horrors of the last 24 hours has been the video footage of army personnel marching through some of these communities that have been worst worst affected um in southeastern Turkey, in Bakurd, um, in, in you know, in northern Kurdistan, not to help, but basically to intimidate. So they've got mm. soldiers marching for no other reason but to intimidate. They're not helping. The Kurdish yeah. communities uh, all around the world have been mobilising to to try and help. And, and you're involved in the campaign here in Australia. And what are the things that um, um, other people in Australia should be doing uh, to to help to help help in this campaign. Look, I think um, Peter, the most important thing is to recognise, like I've said, we cannot rely on the Turkish government, and we cannot rely on any of the very many agencies that are that we're seeing advertised at the moment as places for donations to go to. We cannot rely on those because ultimately they are answerable to the state and they need permission from the state. And we know that the state is blocking those from getting to people who need them most. Um, so the Kurdish community and other communities um, all around the diaspora, all through Kurdistan are desperately trying to coordinate and collect as much resources as we, as we possibly can and put them exactly where we know we can rely and trust on them to get to where they need to go. So one of the main um, one of the main charities that we're we're really, really putting our resources behind is Hevasur or the Kurdish Red Crescent. They've been on op in operation for decades. They're very, very well trusted, really, really um, well loved by you know Kurdish people all over Kurdistan, um, they are there right now on the ground feeding people. We, we've got all the video testimony from, from all of that. So they really are Hevasur. And they've got a, you can pay, um, you can donate by, by PayPal now as well, which mm -hmm. makes things a lot easier. But really, really urging people if they want to help, if they're able to, even if they think it's really small, every little bit helps because people are freezing, you know. The people who have survived the earthquakes are at imminent risk of death from from starvation, from from the freezing cold, and so we're really, really urging people. And if you cannot donate, if you're, you know, if you've got nothing to give, or even if it's a tiny amount, you can also feel and and be assured that you are helping by spreading the word as well. Um, and just what, what should we be asking of the Australian government to do? Is there is there um, is there a campaign that that is taking up this question? There is. So the, the Kurdish Federation um, in Australia, I know, I know especially are really, really working hard to press um, press AFAD, press the Australian government. We've had multiple meetings. They've written to them. Um, they're urging very, very urgently to make sure that the aid, that any aid that we have um, pledged, and I think Albanese pledged recently um, $10 million uh, to aid both Syria and Turkey. What we're trying to do is really impress upon the government that we welcome any and all resources that's critically needed, but we need to make sure that they monitor where those resources go because we do not want them to, as we've seen in the past, you know, we have direct experience of this to go straight to the coffers of the government um, and, you know, not actually getting to the people who need them most. So, 
we're really impressing upon the government at the moment. We need the resources, but you need to absolutely monitor and make sure they actually get to people on the ground.